Good day, everybody. It's Greg Schnell, and I am here with the August 23rd edition of Market Review. What we've got is a wobbly world. Uh, we're trying to get it going in one direction, but it just seems to keep working against us here. Um, I think the bigger picture continues to be that the markets hadn't really rallied all week. We kind of went back and forth and jogged, and then today with the uh, Friday with the free tweet uh, storm kind of pushed the markets down uh, quite hard at the time of recording. So I'm recording this um, at roughly um, midday in New York, so uh, 12.30 Eastern. And what one of the things that um, I continue to be worried about was the global picture where everything is set up and it's a relatively um, cautious time because everything's below long-term moving averages and that kind of thing. So as we work through the market here, um, I continue to be worried about more downside than upside. Um, and it just seems like we're, we're on a precarious path um, and we haven't really been able to get it going in the right direction. So um, anyway, let's start off with where to find my blog, stockcharts.com, articles tab and drop down menu on the right. There's the Canadian technician. Don't ignore this chart and chart watchers. Please hit subscribe at the bottom if you're interested. That'll get you an email when there's new data out there. Contact information, it's Greg S at stockcharts.com and you can always follow me on Twitter at Chanel Investor. And our agenda today, markets move lower on the week. US dollar is still near the highs but getting rocked on Friday. Um, the push lower is, uh, you know, showing up in sectors, railroad, uh, semiconductors, railroads, uh, trucking, we're, st we're starting to see um, important places in the market crack. And so uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. The REITs and utilities continue to be an outperformer. And if you're interested in the REIT specifically, I covered those off on the market buzz on the Friday edition. So please head over to the Stock Charts YouTube channel, look under market buzz and check out the Friday, August 23rd. Uh, video and you'll be able to find uh, an article on how to set up a chart list with REITs in it and uh, look through it, sort by industry group, that kind of thing. So anyway, I hope you'll find that helpful. Um, industrial commodities continue to push lower, which is obviously not what we need if we're going to start to see a, a robust rebound. And the big picture uh, continues to deteriorate. My scans um, aren't showing enough momentum to turn the tide. Uh, so for me, I think uh, that's our, our real problem here. Okay, um, just one more thing. I am speaking in Toronto on September 20th and September 21st at the Toronto Money Show. Um, working backwards, I'll be at uh, the sh uh, Minneapolis CMT Association meeting on uh, September 17th. And then on September 14th, so this is the kind of the first one coming up, is the San Francisco um, uh, meeting of the TSAASF. And I'm that's at Golden Gate University. It's a one-day conference, um, and hopefully you'll get some time to get out towards that. And if so, make sure you introduce yourself to me. I'd be happy to... Uh, to uh, see who's out there and uh, get to spend a little time chatting. Okay, uh, so to start, uh, we're at, we're down Dow down four eleven. You can see it was briefly positive for a little bit there, and now it's just kind of hanging in here. But uh, you know, again, I'm recording this at midday because I'm tied up on the Saturday. So what I needed, to, uh, what I want to convey here though, is that the market is still wobbling, and I don't like to see the Nasdaq down two percent, um, outperforming to the downside. So here's the S and P down one point seven eight, Nasdaq down two, Nasdaq one hundred down two point two. So the big names are falling, and the Russell's down hard. And of course, we've been monitoring the Russell uh, over time as one of the kind of indicators for us as to the bigger picture. So we're going to continue to talk about that today. Uh, one of the things I do want to share, this chart I shared on the uh, on the market buzz on Friday, and, and this is the chart of kind of the big tech leaders or the, the mega caps, and not all mega caps, but some big ones in here. Amazon, you can see, is sitting right on that trend line going back basically to the February, the first dip off the December lows. So we rallied up, pulled back, and then we've been able to create this trend line. But I think we'd all um, call that trend line pretty important on one of the bigger retailers. And we're right at the the 200 day moving average, which is at 1750. Looking at Apple um, on the news that uh, 
President Trump said American companies should avoid working with China. That kind of pushed Apple down hard. And you can see the, the reversal here right at this neckline that we were trying to get through. Uh, Facebook has now broken its uptrend line as of this morning. And the again, this is one of the, the bigger names out there. And what we're worried about is, is that these tech stocks break down. Google also breaking down on the news so that's obviously more pressure netflix i wouldn't say it's breaking down but it's been in a downtrend and hasn't reversed that microsoft clearly one of the strongest stocks out there um, one of my favorites in the tech space and what we see here is a big pullback right to this trend line and i think if that starts to give way by the end of today that's that's a real problem and then uh, adobe you know it's just been an kind of a quiet outperformer, um, really nice, beautiful trend line sitting roughly the same as Microsoft. But what do we see here? It looks like it's going to test this to the downside. So I think a Friday close on this chart will be very important. And this chart is going to be in this weekend's Chart Watchers newsletter. So if you get a chance, uh, click on it and that'll give you the updated chart at the time. So anyway, lots going on here. Um, in in tech land and again that that tweet storm broke this trend line a second one um, apple on the horizontal support and resistance for sure and amazon still trying to hold that so those are all what i think is critical uh, if the tech leadership starts to fail that's a big deal okay um, i'm going to go through my chart lists but a lot of my chart lists are based uh on end of day and so uh, the stuff that doesn't refresh we'll head over and at the end we'll we'll do a market summary just to try and get a final uh, synopsis as close as we can so here's the nasdaq advanced decline line and and what we see here is it hasn't had any real rally effort um, to get going and just when we look back historically we need it to kind of definitively break out in order to get some sort of upside push we haven't had that and and the problem again is that you know we made lower lows here in middle of august and Anytime you're making lower lows on your advanced decline line, that's just a, a real um, important thing to, to consider. For, for those that have been following for a while, I think these trend lines have done a good job of helping us uh, avoid some trouble. And we see this uh, trend line on the NASDAQ composite and we've been kind of huddling underneath the line as opposed to on the line even. So there is no upslope here. We've just jogged sideways really for for you know the last three weeks um, after the original push down um, in early August. So nothing I'm really happy to see there. And on the high low information, uh, we've been talking about it. It's an inability to get back above zero is a critical uh, problem. And what we watched for here is using this moving average period, just are we on the top side or the bottom? And what we found was even even in uh, early 2019, all the way through to May, as the stock market went on to hit new highs, we really didn't have very many stocks participating in a, uh, in new highs. And so the problem with that is we look back to 2014 and 15, and we had a lot lower participation this time, um, really couldn't get enough going. And so that's, I feel like we've set up the same way here. Um, we're starting to get an in increase in, um, stocks making new more stocks making new 52 week lows than highs and that situation doesn't set up very well for a big bull market so um continuing to see this drift lower you know it's easier to say that on a friday when things are down 400 but the the point is the charts have been weak for a while and i think we've been talking about that looking at the new york uh, composite advanced decline line. This one's been interesting because we broke a trend line here uh, back on early August and that one quite frankly was a timely signal and you can see the New York composite has been working its way down uh, and as it's making these lower highs and lower lows here doesn't look very bullish to me but now what we're starting to threaten is this much more gradual slope of the advanced decline line and that looks like it's ready to to crack as well here. So I'm more fearful uh, that we have uh, more problems coming. And even if we wobbled up this week, there the one thing that most people, or I think the big institutional investors are holding out hope for is a big uh, monetary uh, policy break by Europe 
and also by Japan trying to do something to get things kick-started. And I, again, we'll keep watching to see if that, that changes anything. But those are the two kind of rudders that, at this point, outside of the China-US thing, I think those two, if we could get some stimulus there, that might give the, the market a reason to surge. But until we, we see something more positive on any of these fronts, I think we've, we're struggling. Okay, so here's the Dow Jones, um, New York high low. And what we see here is we're just barely above 100 yesterday. Obviously, today we'll be down a bit. Uh, but the again, the problem is we, we're making lower lows on this indicator. And uh, if we can't really get back up above 150, that's a problem. That's kind of what we see in big downtrends. And so as we're, as we're working our way here, making more new lows than new highs, that uh, starts to show up in the chart. And I think, again, if we start to break down below this, um, uh, the, the actual high-low data I've made invisible here, uh, but what you see is this is the New York Composite. And if we can, if we don't end up holding using the scale on the left over there at 12,250. If we don't end up holding that level, I think that tells us that, you know, most of the small caps are going down. And again, if we started to see that break on that uh, first chart I had with the mega cap tech stocks, if all those are going to start to break down, I think this market will roll over relatively hard. Uh, here's the S&P 500, or sorry, S&P 1500, and this is the advanced decline as a percentage. And the AD line has been holding up okay. This will update end of day, so it'll need uh, today to finish. But again, we're just not seeing the the index perform very well here. Um, hasn't had any real upside since the original August push down, and I think what we would have expected is at least some sort of a bounce rally, and we haven't had that. So, um, much more concerned here that things deteriorate. Looking at the Canadian market, um, you know, its advanced decline line has been weakening uh, for a while. And we also see that up here on the stock exchange, it's been holding in this sideways range for five months. It hasn't gone anywhere where the US market at least had pushed to higher highs in July. But the Canadian market's been flat going back to, well, at this point, March 1st. And we're just kind of hanging around this 16,000 level. So until that gets some sort of resolution, um, I think that's a problem. But to me, the advanced decline line drifting lower, the using a moving average, it's also building a, a negative profile. So I'm expecting lower prices for the Canadian market. The Canadian high-low data, again, we haven't been able to get above 50 for two years, so net new highs. So that can be enough to give us little bits of rally, but not continued rally. And so here we're making lower highs and lower lows consistent with the U.S. All of these things add up to being a more sour picture. The uh, uh, summation index and the McClellan oscillator, I think both of those are uh, sitting, you know, in a relatively weak spot. We were below the 400 and I mentioned when it goes below 400, that's usually a problem for us. This chart only goes back a couple of years, but we're going to rewind the tape on the next chart and you'll see that looking back over 15 years, that's a pretty good place to be cautious. Anyway, We've had some dips over here before that just come down and actually circle back up. So it was worth watching. But at this point, you know, we're st we still have that weak uh, move in the Russell that's kind of telling us the underlying is getting weaker, not stronger. Looking across to uh, this 15-year view, or uh, what? Have, yeah, 15 years. What we see here is. You know, we're back below this 400 level, and usually these moves below 400 push the market down. In early 2018, we had that sudden whoosh down, and then the market kind of stabilized. In October of 2018, we pushed down even harder. And then um, now we're sitting here where we couldn't really rally much more than we did back in that summer period as well. And so now we're looking at the right side of this and just wondering, have we got any momentum to go higher? And if not, I think that's the problem. But looking at the New York Composite, there's a 10-year trend line, and we're, it's, call it 12.1. Um, we're sitting at 12.500. So there's not a lot of room on the downside for us to go before we start cracking this trend line again. And we cracked it in in late December, but uh, you know haven't haven't been able to make new highs past the January high there. So uh, we're expecting bigger thrusts that actually get things going and 
and quite frankly they haven't been big enough. So here's the NASDAQ and we're down around the minus 400 level. This is below 200 is usually problematic for us and we're starting to see the NASDAQ crack. More importantly is we're starting to see the NASDAQ underperform the S&P 500 and, and that's going to be a bigger deal. I'm, I'm going to skip over the bullish percent indexes today. They're weak. They were weak. They still are weak. But the bottom line is it's much better when it's uh, Friday close. And so uh, let's just move over those and, and cover them off on next week, which would be, um, you know, a big one. We're going to be able to get the August month and go around the world and look at, at August and see what's going on. So here's the S&P 500 and it's, you know, marginally bouncing off the lows here. Same thing with the NASDAQ. Uh, but that NASDAQ is sitting right on its main trend line, the NASDAQ 100. And the, the S&P needs to hold this 2800 level, which is the 200 day moving average. But it's also support from the, from the most recent August low. All of these things, again, you know, when, when you're trying to break out to new highs and you, so what, what happened here was we had a high, we pulled back, we made a higher high and we struggled. Like we literally just kind of worked our way higher and then it, it gapped lower in August. Now we've rallied, but haven't been able to do, you know, really we had three up days in this whole, um, period. I guess this one in here would be four. So we've had three up days or four up days in here. And essentially, other than those kind of sudden bursts, uh, most of them, uh, you know, as soon as we, we get there, the, the market would run up and then do nothing and just go sideways for the rest of the day. So I think the real question uh, we have to ask ourselves is what's going to push this market higher? And I don't have an answer for that right now. Um, so we're continuing to watch, but again, the fact that we haven't been able to rally at all in here and this big down day to end Friday is going to make for a pretty weak candle on a, on a weekly chart because we'll have pushed up and closed on the lows, which is uh, obviously problematic. So looking at this chart, this is our uh, Fed meeting dates and we don't have one of those until mid-September, so roughly a month away. We had the Jackson Hole meeting and we can put that flag like this one over here. Uh, on the chart. And, and the point, um, again, just the idea of this chart is to make sure that we're, um, you know, keeping track of what's influencing the market. And I think that Fed meeting at the end of August, uh, or at the end of uh, July was pretty obvious that it was important. Um, we gapped down after that, and we haven't been able to make any progress since. So with that, uh, uh, you know, I continue to think these, uh, the, the profile of these Fed meetings is important. We didn't get any real, you know, I think it was Hacker who said um, he, he didn't think we had a need for another rate cut and the market didn't like that. And now here we are today um, with some of the tweets coming out around uh, avoiding China and that's really starting to put pressure. So we'll see if that makes the Fed um, move from, I'll call it stable to down. Here's the S&P over the last month and you can just see literally working sideways with no real momentum. Doesn't make it uh, easy for investors, but uh, we're sitting right on this trend line. And again, what is this trend line? Let's open up the chart a little bit. What we see, it was the high back in January of 2018. And then it was briefly support in here, fell below it, tried to stay above it. So we're trying to hold this again and, you know, just going back, we're 18 months later and we're kind of exactly where we started with no real uh, move. So this move to the upside looked pretty good, but I think uh, anybody who's been listening uh, to the market reviews will kind of uh, remember that we were pretty bearish on that moment. Looking here at the, just the three markets side by side, Horizontal support and resistance levels uh, based on the September high and the April high. We've kind of been bumping up against it for three weeks and haven't really been able to break through it. Looking at the NASDAQ composite, same thing here. We're just struggling to get above them. So this is a false breakout. And on the Russell, the fact that there was no breakout was uh, a problem. And now that we're back down to testing the lows is, uh, is not helpful. Rolling into the S&P 500 on the daily chart, uh, 
again, maybe, you know, maybe now we can start to remove this trend line out of this picture because that was the really big uptrend off the 2016 low into 2018. And then we had the May bump here that kind of failed right as this, these trend lines intersected. We got up to test this top trend line again in July, fell apart. Now we're stuck below the 50 day moving average. So our next test looks like the, the 200 day. Our p momentum is below zero, so that's kind of problematic. This is the chart that I uh, focus on a lot. Um, again, these breaks in this relative strength trend line where the NASDAQ outperforms the S&P 500. Once that broke, that was kind of a clue that we were going down. In this case, this was the May high, broke down. Here we are at the end of July high, broke down. And now it looks to me like, you know, we're more in jeopardy of breaking this um, uptrend for the whole year for 2019. And a break below here is a pretty important one. We're below zero on momentum. We have broken this uptrend already. And now to roll over right here just suggests to me that we're going down at least to 7,600 and potentially down to this 7,000. And then we'll see what happens there. Um, if if globally the markets all start to crack, I think next week would be a big down week and we'll just watch how we close out the month. But um, again, we, we started the month with a pull down. We've bounced back and forth for most of the month and now we're just trying to see if we can hold on. Um, it, a breakdown here is is pretty important from a from my technical perspective. Uh, this relative strength trend line that we've had in place off the 2016 low, that's the one I just mentioned on the last chart. If we start to break down below this uh, purple level, that's a problem. We're sitting right on this uptrend line off the December low, May low, and now um, the last few days here, or the last few weeks, just gently uptrending lows. The real question is, can we hold above them? So, so far this week, it's an inside week, uh, but closing on the lows kind of suggests a bit of a uh, lack of momentum higher. New York Composite sitting right on its 10-month uh, moving average. We continue to, I continue to use this chart as a guide for overall market strength. And again, we, we haven't been able to break out to new highs uh, that that January 2018 high is still the one that the New York Composite is working on. And so until I think we get broader index participation, that's the issue. This is zoomed in on that last chart. What you just see is, you know, we had a, a big drop down in May, a rise back up in June. We tried to do something in July and ended up with a really small candle, um, not much going on, very small range. And then um, we continued to close at that same level and then rallied briefly above it and come down here. So now we're testing the bottom of this range on the composite, much like the Russell. All of this adds up to just saying, you know, it doesn't seem to be a lot more support for going higher here. And I think a break outside of this 12,000 range on this uh, New York composite would be a would probably have the markets go back and test the December lows. Russell, um, we're sitting right on this red trend line. Here it's in in a bar chart. The next chart I think is a line chart, but you can just see the Russell's rolling over at zero, and we've mentioned that that's been problematic before, so we're continuing to watch that situation. Here it is as a line chart, and again, it looks much cleaner here because we don't have the, the intra-week highs or the the open stretches. This is where people actually go home on a weekend um, in a in a either holding or not holding the market, and we're sitting right on this trend line. So today will be uh, where we finish it is quite important, especially for the Russell, because of this um, situation where we're sitting. Momentum has rolled over back below zero, and it rolled over very close to the zero level, which to me says um, we didn't have much upside going anyway. IWM right now sitting pretty much right on the lows, just a hair off them uh, on on the weekly basis. I'm gonna yeah, here's the TSX. One of the things about the Canadian market is it's been below zero here, and we have a downtrend in momentum, and these downtrends have been pretty um, 
important to watch but we're back below zero here and the last bounce was barely above so this suggests to me the market doesn't have a lot more momentum and I think the Canadian market's usually weaker than the US so I like to use it as a clue and it's it has been helpful on the weekly for the Canadian market we're stuck below this uh, 10 week or sorry 20 week moving average which is the center of the Bollinger's and you know just going back and looking when we're below that that's a problem and again the Canadian market being weaker than the US market can give us some clues as to um, you know if weakness is going to start to set in we're also moving below 50 on this weekly chart as long as the 40 would hold that would be important uh, so there's a little bit more downside which looks like the 40 week moving average in this case but i don't think the canadian market is going to be able to hold up um, if if the whole if globally the markets get weaker and i i think the push on china um, this afternoon is going to make uh, more is going to make commodities less in demand which should push down the Canadian market and I think I'm one of the the few technicians that uses the commodity markets uh, to te to help at least analyze strength for the global picture so um, this is the XVG again this is where we equal weight each stock in the index and uh, what you could see is this has been rolling over and below its 40 week moving average it was briefly trying to move up here and this chart won't update until next business day so on Monday we'll get an updated version but what you know again the problem we're going to have here is we we're rolling over here on these cycle lines and and I put in a market top flag already but these 212 week cycle lines well it might not top right on the cycle lines it does give us an idea of a of a period of time for a for a market cycle to roll through so right now for it to hit its top here is kind of in the area it's a little bit um late uh, or I guess we the market could have been higher here on this and that's what it was for the S&P 500 but here we are rolling over now and and a downsloping average tells us to at least be cautious the Shanghai this charts gonna update um, later tonight and I think the it, it closed fine and then the Chinese tariffs announcement came um, for the open of the US market but after the Shanghai close so this Shanghai market actually will close up slightly higher close to its 10-week um, moving average and we'll just keep watching it there but then I think we'll have to see what happens on Sunday it's the PPO right at zero that starts to put pressure on this chart and if all of a sudden Shanghai rolled over quite hard we we would have more issues so um, watching these charts in here very closely the Nikkei has shown no real strength here again made its high last September we're a good 20 percent off of that high and now the real as we can see the barely a bounce off the mid-August low here or early August low and we're testing this horizontal support level call it 2250 20,250 but the problem is we're below this 21,000 level so I would expect to see weakness in Japan on Monday uh, when we are back in the markets US dollar this chart does not show the intraday weakness so I just want to go get the UUP and uh, point out that uh, today's market really kind of moved around so we're I'll call it we're in the middle of last week's bar um, but a big outside down week so if we just go look at the US dollar um, here we were rattling up in this area so we're going to be down whatever somewhere in the high 97s we're still above this red trend line so let's keep watching in that area but I think the bigger issue for us is um, these currency moves are are getting more aggressive because of the uh, trade friction going on here's the EU and uh, this XEU chart shows the intraday so we're making lower highs lower lows but we're closing near the highs um, the PPO has rolled over below zero there's not a whole bunch that gives me strength that this is going to go a lot higher but at this point um, at least it's closing near the top of the range looking at um, this is the XEU again and you can see this nice bar here on Friday so breaking above the consolidation meaningfully and looking at the the German market it 
you know, it's holding up. This is the DAC, so it'll update tonight. And it had some weakness from this morning, but I think that market was closing um, as those tweets came out. So anyway, we, we the issue we have here is it's below its 12,000 level and hasn't looked very good. It's having some manufacturing uh, PMI numbers come in quite weak which doesn't lead me to believe that the leadership in, in Europe is going to improve um, until that gets picked up. And if we get European stimulus, maybe that helps. But um, it's hard to imagine that the trade friction, because uh, we still have that EU-US uh, trade agreement to get worked out as well. So it's not like um, that one's all done and dusted. Looking at the Swedish krona, it it pushed down below this big horizontal support and resistance level uh, this week for the first time in a long time. But more importantly, um, it's now going to, looks like it'll close on a doji this week uh, where it's unchanged or close to unchanged, but still lower highs, lower lows, and um, closing in the middle of the bar. If we unwind this chart, um, well, we have to go back quite a ways. So... Yeah, there, there's no, <laughs> we, we're we not expecting the Swedish krona to get this week. And with the krona down here, I think the next problem will be, that probably suggests the Europe will, uh, will drop down here. So I'm going to take this, I must have put this 95 line on uh, a different chart when I copied and changed the ticker. So anyway, I'm going to take it off. And we're, we're definitely testing the lows. So I expect that over the next couple of weeks, that's probably what Europe will do too the EU, um, the Euro will do. Looking in on uh, the British pound actually has a really interesting move today. And the reason I want to point that out is because, um, you know, it's pushing higher. It's going to close up at the top of the range. You can see it's the highest close this month. And then um, interestingly enough, on the previous charge, it shows um, Boris getting elected in here. And We've consolidated since the drop there, and now you know we're on our fourth week of just kind of building in this sideways range. So after we broke down below the 2017 lows, now we're trying to hold them. Um, anyway, one, one of the things about the British pound is it makes complex bottoms, not simple bottoms. Like it doesn't come down and bounce up. It Almost all of these are um, multi-month efforts to try and bottom. So even if it stabilizes in here, I'm expecting a lot more wobble before that starts to go vertical. Um, okay, Japanese yen and... On the, this chart, this dollar sign JPY USD will not update until the end of day. But the point I want to make is if we use um, XJY, this updates during the day. And on the uh, on the move in gold today, we also see the yen surging back up. So it's still so far got an inside bar from last week, but it's closing near the top of the range. But in this case, this might be the 95 line. Um, this 95 uh, horizontal line that I have on the chart is pretty important, obviously, from a big picture perspective. And we can see that the Nikkei is very close uh, to breaking down the six-year uptrend that it's been on from 2012 to 2019. I guess that's seven. Anyway, a break here, pretty important on the Nikkei chart. And I think um, that's one of the charts I'm watching very, very closely, as everybody knows. Uh, looking at the daily on this, this sudden surge on the Nikkei, or on the yen, um, also gold is making that same move, pushing higher. But what we see, this Nikkei really has, you know, very low momentum. And as this yen climbs, it's all putting pressure on the on the Japanese exports as well so not helping them from that perspective Canadian dollar as the US uh, even though the US dollar is weaker today the Canadian dollar continues to push lower so made lower lows this week and horizontal support resistance on a daily chart the Australia market you can see it's drilling down here this is weekly but we're down here for four weeks and we haven't really gone any lower but that's after breaking to new 10-year lows or nine-year lows so uh, all of these charts really um, 
drilling near the bottom. And so if the, all of a sudden the US dollar goes on a run, and I think I mention this every week, but if the US dollar really kicks up here and these charts start to crack, um, that would be a big issue. Looking at the emerging market currencies, that CEW is the ETF that tracks that, you can see these have been rolling over quite hard, and here's copper in orange, and as copper rolls over, so, so does this currency. They track pretty well together, and you can see the upslope, um, that the PPO momentum, right? Uh, that upslope line has been broken for uh, all of August now, and it looks like it's going to break lower. I'm expecting this to break down hard. This is EEM, and you can see that's a three-year uptrend line for EEM. And what are we doing in August here? But we're breaking that trend line. I think that's problematic, and I don't think that these October, November, December lows are going to hold. Now, these are weekly closes, not um, intraday. So if we go to a daily chart, it might not look the same, or if we go to a candlestick chart, um, it'll look different. But on this line chart, you can see we're clearly um, breaking the three-year trend line. And when emerging markets are weak, like in 2014, 2015, that was a clue, and the U.S. markets ended up being weak in that period as well. Okay, um, this is just the daily CEW and the currencies diving. Um, EP, EEM is pulling down as well, and you know gold is racing off to the upside. This is the gold miners. They tracked very, very well, and then all of a sudden they've had this huge divergence in here as everybody runs to safety on the bond move. Um, I don't have a lot of things going on in the bond. A lot of these charts are going to update end of day. So as much as I'd like to go through them, I think it's better that we wait and go through them. Um, I'll cover them off on the month then next week. Here is the transports. And again, they push down hard on the news of uh, more tariffs from China and then uh, avoid China tweet from President Trump. And so with that breakdown here, you know, it doesn't take any imagination to draw a line in here around this 9,700 level and say if this doesn't hold, that's a bigger deal. But relative strength is breaking down, and so I'm assuming that this is going to go lower. Transports on the weekly. Um, how important is this horizontal level of 10,000? I think pretty important. Again, uh, final support here was 97.15 on the low, and we're you know, we'll, we'll see if we end up testing quite that low today. We're, we're just below 9,800 right now. So looking at the airlines, again, sideways consolidation, nothing really going on and uh, difficult to own. Looking at the airlines over the week, um, what we see, again, just sideways chop. We're going to close near the lower end of the bar, but we're making lower highs and lower lows for four weeks, rolling over below zero, and now this week, or sorry, rolling over near zero, and now this week falling below zero on the PPO. That's just not that good a news for us. So railroads, this is one that I think is pretty important. And I mentioned um, for the for the people who have been following uh, back in June, I suggested if the railroads start to underperform, that's a, a problem. And then, um, so that was a short period of time. That's roughly a two-year trend line. And now they've been underperforming even more. Today, they're down 2.5% or 2.6%. And the issue is that we have um, the overall index is down roughly 2%. So they continue to outperform to the downside, which is a problem. When we go to the weekly chart, and this is the one that I um, I think is way more important, is that this four-year uptrend line has now been broken, much like we had in the spring of 2015. And when that trend line broke, that was uh, a place to be cautious. And that's breaking right now. PPO has moved below zero. Um, so far, everything that we thought might happen on this chart is happening. Next high has the potential to be final high because we dipped below zero and normally once the momentum gets that week, we have a concern. Now you can see back in 2012, this is also when um, monetary easing kicked in worldwide. Um, so here we are below zero after being below zero, made a lower high in momentum and now we're breaking down. The railroads to me tell me uh, that industrial goods are slowing and that's something to be worried about. And I think this chart is as clear as it can be as to um, 
laying out the facts for us to to see. Railroads have been outperforming for four years and all of a sudden that trend changes. I think that's something to watch. Trucking rolling over just at zero here, barely um, the line coming up and rolling over. Uh, we'll see where it closes today. Obviously, it's not going to cross its signal line, but if it starts to move back down again, that's a problem. And we have an inside week closing on the low of the bar or the low bar, and we're right at the moving average here for the 10 week and slightly above the 40 week. But everything adds up that, um, you know, this the full stochastic is giving us a sell signal. The RSI is staying on a weekly uh, bear market signal. So a rollover here, I think, is, is an important place to watch. And again, I'm not trying to be bearish. It's just all the charts are pointing that way. Looking at the autos, uh, they continue to drift into the bottom right-hand corner. And I've, I've zoomed out a couple of times here. But you can see the PPO rolling over at zero is telling you caution, caution, caution. And it's been trying to hold in here, the, you know, with... Uh, uh, oscillations roughly the same every time but we really haven't been able to get any momentum established there and if we um, unwind the slider here and go back whatever let's just pick 15 years this is the issue for the autos and you know if we start to break below this level is that meaningful I think it's very meaningful so um, try and just be aware that that big picture is damaging Broker dealers, they're having a rough day today. And uh, so this is the week. So last week they rallied up off the lows and closed uh, unchanged on the previous week. This week they rallied higher and closed on the lows. So it looks like there's no real support uh, for higher prices this week. Now, next week we'll test um, probably a little bit lower. But the question would be, our momentum's already rolled over below zero. We've broken the uptrend line off the December lows looks to me problematic and I think the broker dealers are typically what we would call a leadership group where they kind of hint at where the market is going. Utilities have pushed to a new high this week. Um, the fact that it's not right on its final high is just fine. We're still breaking out um, and REITs and utilities as I mentioned on the opening are some of the better performing spaces. Here is the industrials and uh, the PPO broke here as well. It's rolling over. It hasn't got to zero yet, but getting below zero on a weekly chart on the industrials would be problematic. We're, st we're trying to hold the 40-week moving average as we go into the close on Friday. Semiconductors, they're getting hit hard today. Uh, they're down 3.5% uh, on the on all of the news, but we have this uptrend line here that's very close to being fractured. Maybe we'll just draw that in. So uh, for next week, that'll be something to just watch if the semiconductors start to break down again. I think um, most of us would realize that's a, uh, when, when the semis are weak, that's a bigger problem. Okay, these commodities charts are not complete uh, because they're all end of day updates. So I'm going to skip through a little bit of them. I can cover off, you know, what's the price action on commodities with the DBC. And what we see here is this early August low. Um, we're not quite down to that extent yet, but we're definitely down to the last two weeks of lows here. And horizontally, that's a pretty ugly place on this chart. So if commodities are gonna start to push lower, my work suggests that tells us we're going to have a lot more things going lower. Um, there's been some people hoping that the medical marijuana stocks would start to move higher this week. And uh, one of the reasons for that is the edibles are going to start to legalize in Canada. And then, of course, the thought would be that eventually the U.S. would start to do that. I think the bigger picture that we need to be aware of here is marijuana has been underperforming uh, the S&P 500 for almost six months. And then uh, part of that is, is uh, you know, price moving down. But we've broken the two-year uptrend in the marijuana names. And now we're about to go and test that December low. If it doesn't hold, I think that's a really uh, difficult place to watch. So uh, be aware of just how weak that is. And if you're still hopeful that this sector starts to turn, I think let some institutions make the bottom in that before we try to do it with our own money. 
Um, here's the coal ETF and what we see is this is breaking down to new two-year lows. We've been all over this, but uh, it's broken down again. The steel ETFs clearly breaking down. I'm, I'm sure that one is, um, the difficulty with that one obviously is its world um, impacts and oil buys a lot of steel, but also, um, you know, buildings and stuff like that. To, to see steel that week is a big concern. Lithium uh, continues to break to new lows here. No real upside look there. And the same thing with rare earth strategic metals. And I think just, you know, standing back when we don't need big commodities, that's a problem worldwide. I did look at the copper chart and I've got it down in here somewhere. The copper ETF and it's actually holding in there today. Hasn't really broken down too hard. So it's down 0.29%. I might have expected worse on all of this trade news, uh, but the bottom line is that the chart is still pretty ugly. I did read that, you know, people are worried about actual copper supply levels um, over the next few uh, years, and I think that is a very valid concern. Looking at the weekly chart, the problem we see here is this is testing this big uptrend. So if copper doesn't hold in here, I think we're going to go down and test you know, the early 2017 levels, and which is just a one leg lower, but then worse than that would be the 2016 uh, down in quite a bit lower, around $2. So that would be a, another 20% drop in the price of copper. All that to say these are uh, problematic times because we're just not getting the price action we want to see um, to, to kind of indicate a, a turn in global momentum. XLE, that's pretty much a gap lower. Um, we gapped lower to start, rallied a little bit, and then gave it all back, and we're right near the lows of the day. So people are starting to price in lower energy. And their first solar chart, um, I looked at it earlier today. It doesn't look very good. It looks to me like it's rolling over as well. And some of those uh, renewable energy sources have been some of the stronger charts. But here's Crack, the refiner's ETF, and it's um, obviously... Uh, sideways this week right it's 0.74 but i think the bigger issue for us is this horizontal support and resistance line needs to hold and if it starts to break down any more um, weak gasoline prices weak uh, crude oil prices uh, they make more money when crude is falling and they can try and make a bigger crack spread or the difference between their crude and their their finished goods but the problem is eventually that catches up and what we have right here is the you know, this chart's been drifting lower since last September, suggesting that the economic recovery isn't really kicking in. And uh, if it starts to break down below that level, I think that'll tell us uh, bigger things. Here is the frac ETF for unconventional oils. And uh, we tried to cover off some of the shale companies in uh, Wednesday's uh, market buzz. And looking at the companies in there, it's just decimated. Um, you know, the, the charts are getting weaker and until they bottom, you know, we want to keep looking in there, but until they bottom, that's a, um, an area to watch. I think when they turn, it'll be a stunning rally, but until they turn, it's definitely a place to avoid. Here's the frack weekly. And I think, uh, this chart kind of lays it out quite clearly how, um, concerned we are. We're back to the 2016 lows, even though crude is up uh, almost 50% higher than it was back then. I think the low in crude was $25. We're at 55. Um, so having this huge gap, uh, is concerning and you can just see literally, um, this chart is being bombed away. And until we get this momentum trend to start improving, that would help. And back here in, uh, 2015, you saw this trend line come down and by March it had started to break out and look at this big rally that ensued here. These are $12 to $19. That's a nice 50 to 60% run. So anyway, we'll wait for that, but uh, it doesn't seem like it's this week. Um, again, the crude, nothing really to report um, until we get Friday's close, but we're sitting right on this trend line and this chart will update um, end of day. That's the problem is it looks like it's going to break down. And again, momentum was below zero. So if it rolls over here, that's a problem. If we go look at USO, um, yeah, USO is gapping lower. So it looks like crude is going to finish below that trend line. And I think the 
The concern, obviously, is energy demand worldwide. If that slows, that would indicate a, a slowing economy to me. And so while some people will say low crude is, is uh, bullish for the U.S. economy, I would say exactly the opposite. Crude has done a good job of telling us to um, be cautious, and uh, so far, it's been right. Nat gas, um, I keep thinking this will be able to rally out of these big holes, um, but the bad news continues and this chart, you know, continues to get weaker. So we still haven't seen a turn there yet, despite the low prices. Nuclear, um, this NLR ETF, uh, again, it, this one's interesting because it's actually the utility side. It's more the power plants that are generating power, but they must see declining demand or something because as a utility why isn't this chart breaking out to the upside and it's clearly uh, pretty weak so this is problematic now if we go to ura which is the uranium miners chart um, this chart living down in the bottom corner here um, not much good going on and today gapping lower again suggesting more problems and this is the URA weekly, but you can just see this four-year horizontal level hasn't been able to get going. We're right down near the bottom of the range. And again, this week we tried to rally a little bit and gave it all back. And I've got Cameco down here on the bottom, and it's just living near three-year lows. So even though China's got a whole bunch of nuclear plants that's opening, and I think India has a few too, uh, we just don't see the demand showing up or the price action showing up in the price of uranium yet. Okay, um, here's the steel chart. And the only reason I think it's important is just um, looking at this ETF, you can see we're breaking below this two-year support level. I mentioned it on the earlier chart. But everything here tells us to be cautious. We have a downtrend in relative strength. We have uh, PPO rolling over just at zero. You can see I've flagged that multiple times on the chart. These rollovers are problems. We're not getting the, the bounce level we wanted to. And one of the things um, I mentioned the other day that the Shanghai chart looked relatively encouraging because it was trying to trend up. It'll be really interesting to see how Shanghai behaves this week um, coming up now that this new tariff and, and uh, Trump saying to avoid China. Um, that, that one really seems to be uh, more problematic from my perspective. Okay, let's get into the gold miners because one of the things that's happening in the U.S. is the XME, which is the Metals and Mining ETF, um, rolling over, going down. But if we go look at the Canadian one, XMA.TO, we see it going the other direction, and that's because it's heavily weighted in gold. And you can see this horizontal support and resistance level it's pushing above. Um, gold continued to surge today so that's pushing this chart up and when we go into the gold etfs this is nice because this was as of yesterday and um, we'll obviously get to see today's price action um, after the close but we had a big wide-ranging bar with higher highs and higher lows higher close and so far this week it looked low well now all of a sudden we're popping way back up and uh, gold looks like to me it'll close higher on the week we'll see that in just a second on the gdx chart or, or on the gld chart but this continued uptrend that's why you need to wait for a friday close and unfortunately at the time of recording i don't have that uh, but we want to keep watching these charts and how it closes each week up or, you know, higher high, higher low, higher close. That's an uptrend. We continue to deliver that. And gold has been wobbling here, um, watching the intra-week price action. Um, but the, the close continues to help us decide which way this market wants to go and it still looks higher for gold. So this is um, the consolidation I just mentioned. And obviously today we're spiking up here. So that's nice to see. A big push on gold. Um, if we can get back above these 15, 20 levels, clearly breaks this downtrend line and we start to move higher. Again, it's on a daily basis, but um, the chart's still okay. This was uh, just big five-year picture. And you see the PPO way up above prior highs. Um, never short a market that's up that high um, when momentum is that strong it could pull all the way back to two percent well it might give you a little bit of a pullback it usually suggests that um, the market has more strength than we think 
So I don't have any reason to start shorting it. Um, not that I would want to short gold. Um, uh, when I have tried to short gold, I usually get uh, hurt by the trade. So we'll see. Anyway, here's uh, GLD. And again, what we can see here is it's pushed to um, break above the prior week's high. So still very strong. And when we go look at GDX, the gold miners, this chart Oh, come on, this chart is trying to push above the two weeks ago high. So it hasn't done that yet. But what we need to know is, um, you know, can gold really get rocking here? And, you know, it continues to look towards new highs. So uh, it's hard to argue with the tape. Silver um, has pushed up as well. What we see uh, from silver is, you know, on this chart, the weekly, it looks middling. But if we go to SIL, which is the... Um, sorry, SLV, which is the ETF tracking silver. It's breaking out to a higher high here. And if we go to SIL, this is the silver mining stocks. And they're doing like GDX. They're kind of consolidating so far. If they continue to break higher, that is extremely bullish. Lumber. Um, I know the home builders in the U.S., those charts have been looking pretty good lately. It'll be interesting to see how they perform today. Um, actually, I guess we could go look. Let's go just see what Tol Tol Brothers is doing. Um, and what we've got on Toll is that the... Um, you know, the, yeah, it's just trading sideways. So hasn't really broken out. I think it was uh, DR Horton was doing much better um, at, in starter homes. And that one's still holding up nicely. But getting back to the price of lumber, what we see here is this chart sitting right um, under the zero level. And if it's going to roll over to the downside, that's a problem for us because, um, you know, lumber is a pretty good economic indicator. Again, the home builder, uh, low price home builders or entry level home builders are doing okay. But the Toll Brothers, um, I think I saw somebody said, the people who are buying those homes are more aware of the big economic picture. Anyway, one thing we're watching for on this lumber chart is can the momentum get back above zero? And it's it won't take much, but it needs to get that thrust to do that. And if we look at the wood ETF, right here it's living down here near the 52 week lows so last week it did make a new 52 week low this week it continues to um, bobble down here we've got this down sloping trend line so i continue to watch lumber and i, I mentioned that jim pattison uh, decided to buy canfor forest products take it private and he's he's uh, a very successful investor um, much like uh, rich kinder from kinder morgan and takes companies private just um when the market doesn't like them and then takes them public when the market loves them. And so he's been able to make that spin work pretty well. Lastly, I just want to jump down and show you, um, here is uh, FAN, the ETF for um, solar, or sorry, wind and solar. And what we see here on FAN is it's trying to hold above its 200-day moving average, but clearly dropped down this week with the rest of it. This looks like a double topping structure to me, so something to worry about. Here is the five-year uh, five weekly on it. And you can see the momentum has rolled over. This looks uh, quite concerning. Then if we go to um, First Solar, what we see on First Solar here is the chart um, is stuck below its 10-week moving average. The momentum or the full stochastic has made lower lows here, so that's not very bullish. And this uptrend line has broken. So with all of these things going on, I'm getting the picture where the market is cracking and we don't quite have enough upside um, to make the difference. So until we get more upside pressure, I, I continue to think this market is going to deliver lows, uh, lower lows. So let me just go to the members dashboard here and click update and just make sure that we've got the latest um, data on here. Uh, the big problem for me, again, we're down 526, so we're, it looks to me like we're going to close near the lows today. But uh, with that, I want to thank everybody for taking the time to join me. I have three speaking uh, engagements or two speaking engagements, plus I'll be in Minneapolis over the next two weeks, next three weeks. So if you can join me, I'd really like that. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to follow, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.